Zumi's prayers, a world of a different nature. There is across the histories of all nations a vast range of convoluted religions. None contains a person, only powers and personalities and philosophies. The conception of your messiahship is the most pronouncedly supernaturalistic conception in the whole range of religion. Your coming as the Father's Messiah, often stated, my Messiah, implies the creation of a new system of things, two ages, two worlds, and this not one world blossoming into another, as men suppose, but of an age or world of one nature being succeeded and superseded by an age of world of a different nature. If we truly knew the life you lived here, we would see the sharp dividing of these worlds. Yet this is what constant prayer and the knowledge of God achieves, by section of the two planes of life, fostered always toward the spiritual. The Spirit was poured out from on high upon the people, reversing existing conditions. The supernatural consummation we anticipate was preceded by the equally supernatural transactions of your life. The Messiah is the nucleus or focus of the supernatural come to us. That the Lord Jesus is that same Spirit is known to us. Thus, upon the ascent of the Son of God, came to us in tongues of fire the Spirit of God. We cannot artificially impose instantaneity on events which occur, not in earthly time sequence, but in the wholeness of eternal things. Thus is it known we were saved before the foundation of the world. Messiah shows in every moment of his life the distinction between this world and the world to come, not only theoretically, but practically. We review all moments of your life as supernatural. At the same time, there are unconscious supernatural processes in ours. We live them by faith, not by sight. As Christ lived and moved and had his being in the world of the supernatural, the thought of the world to come, this too may be ours, the now blessedness of the world to come. Your supreme gift is refused by the many. You are seated on the throne of the Lord of Spirits, hidden before, preserved by the Most High in the presence of His might. Your high office exists for the sake of God. We benefit secondarily. While here, your conflict with Israel and with us was that in the name of God and for the sake of him, you charged the people with sin, declaring them unfit for entrance upon the eschatological inheritance awaiting us, summoning them to repentance. The first words of your ministry echo now, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In our behalf, you set your face toward Jerusalem there to make your decease. Before, during, and after your life, you are sovereign in the truth, offering it to us. For we are apostasy's children, falsehood's own breed. Under each rustling tree we inflame ourselves. Even to the end of all these things you shall be appeased. You revive the spirit of the lowly, nor are forever wrathful. You were wearied of us, yet did not say, it is hopeless, giving your own strength to our hand. Leaving these things behind, we draw near to you to take delight. We lift ourselves to the light of your face. If we are zealous in drawing near to you, we need not fast or put on self-denial. We are to put all things in your hands. For us, not this the meaning of is this not the meaning of Messiah? You are eternally anointed to show us the way, in human form, in human words, the way to you, and to immerse our every moment in your sovereign will and pleasure. This to give you glory, which is the end of all that is. Amen.